I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, Dan will sing the national anthem. Yeah. That'll be my no. last <laughs> Okay. Um, we need a motion to sign the warrant. Motion to sign the warrant. All right. All in favor. some of the people from the public hearing were here, I'd like to just address the um, going forward with any of the dangerous buildings right now. I thought it would be a good idea if we went ahead with option one, going to a formal, a formal hearing in front of the select board with findings that are recorded in the deed of records. How do we feel about that, Tony? I agree. I like the motion that we go forth on that. Dan? Uh, now, okay, so we can vote all in favor, but now we have to decide what building, what buildings, which which building are we talking, which one? I mean, just well, the, the Peacock building? Initially, from what Jim is okay, talking about. Okay, so we'll guy. make a motion for Peacock that building, for the, so that one, so we made a motion for the Peacock building to go forward with a formal hearing and findings to be recorded in the deed of records. Recorded in Peacock building or Nordic? Delight? Nordic. Well, you can make it map and watch. Yeah, definitely. Is she in here still? No. Oh. You have the building owned by Matt, and one of the lights. And I think we, uh, that's it for now. Old business music in the park. At the last uh, meeting, we talked about um, it was Kurt Andreessen that was trying to uh, get music in the park events under the town's umbrella insurance. According to our uh, underwriter at MMA, it is not, uh, he's not able to do it. It has to be a direct town committee. And we explained to him the whole <coughs> process, and he understands, and he's not. I've got to go that route, so it's, it's, not a, it's not able to be done. And, and he's still one. pressing forward with uh, the organization. He's going to do it anyway, and he said he'll think about it, but he was trying to do it on his own. And Maori Beach parking lot plowing. And that is also not a go. Our legal services strongly advised against it. Um, the town would have to, it would basically have to donate its time, and it's, it's not able to be done. A town meeting would have to be held in order to get permission to donate time from the public works <coughs> department to, pro to plow somebody else's property. <laughs> Regardless, that it's a it's a non it's a, a nonprofit, it's a nature conservancy, but mm -hmm. they still advised against it. So that is also a no go. Yeah. Okay, no and no. Something positive, new business. It's the sixth annual marathon international. Maureen and John, <coughs> you're up. You're up. Okay. Well, um, I know you know us, but I'm Maureen Lord. I'm the chair this year, the U.S. chair for the marathon, and John is our race director. And in case you don't know us, but I think everyone does. 
Um, first, we'd like to thank you for the letter of support that you gave us. Um, we really appreciate that, and we've used it with our uh, seeking sponsors, and it was very helpful, so thank you for that. Um, we're here tonight to formally request approval for us to be able to go ahead with Marathon, and there are basically four areas that we sort of break down that, it, that your approval would cover for us to go ahead, and I'll just briefly touch on those. Um, one, approval to go ahead with the event. Approval of the traffic and parking arrangements. As, and again, not much is changing from last year. I was going to say, it's similar than last year? All the same. We're okay. expecting the same. No more races added. Nothing has been added or deleted. We're Perfect. expecting about 700 people, about the same as last year. Um, same routes. Um, assistance that we need, approval of traffic and parking arrangements, <coughs> assistance from the Public Works Department in laying out and picking up the barriers and cones. They usually start early in the morning and then clean that up for us in the afternoon and we provide some help with that. And assistance from the Fire Department with traffic control and emergency management. And then so, um, again, just seeking your formal approval and in the minutes so that we have that for reference. <laughs> Want to make a motion? Uh, motion to support with the four initial criteria for the 2018 International Marathon. Second. Uh, All in favor? Well, thank you very much. This is just a draft program, but it <coughs> does give you some information on the progress and different things that we'll leave with Do I get a radio? <laughs> well, that is something we would like to formally ask you as well tonight, which will manage Pleasant Street and the well, other well, areas that you have for us, Carol, well, that in all the previous years. It's been I very... Don't need a key or two. I'll do it. Okay. I'm putting... Uh, you heard we'll it here. Will and trust <laughs> Renee. <laughs> Well, we look forward well, to working with we'll everyone again yeah. this year. We need all the volunteers that we can get for this. The function is just wonderful. And I just think we're going to have more people than ever now. Thank you. But we can get up to 1,000, right? Up to about 1,200. Up to 1,200. And every day there's more uh, places for people to stay. And it's exciting. It's a whirlwind weekend. And it's what, the fourth weekend in June? June 24th this year. It's the fourth Sunday in June, so this year is the 24th. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You'd like to stay, but you got to run, right? You've got to run. Always run. Oh, you got to run. That's a pun. Okay, Mike. Mike, you're here for the American Legion liquor license renewal, right? Yes. Okay. Um, nothing's changed? Nothing's changed. All right, then. We need a motion to accept the application for the American Legion liquor license. I make a motion that we accept the application for the renewal of the liquor license for the American Legion. Second. Cheers. All in favor? Cheers. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You want it, Mike, mm -hmm. now, or come get it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have to make a copy. This is out. Sorry. Oh, but actually, it's not to baby. She can't make the baby. She's going to do the baby. I think I'll go on the machine. Okay. All right. What about the serial bulbs? Well, why don't we just skip to the light bulbs for a minute and why you do that? So we're on, we're on to five. LED light bulbs upgraded. A lot of people wear a lot of hats, right? I just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, there were some amazing rebates at the end of the year from Efficiency Maine, and we took advantage of those rebates, and we replaced all the lights in this municipal building with LED uh, to help save energy costs. They last a lot longer, and they burn way less energy. So I'm really hoping to knock down that uh, average of $500 a month electricity bill this building down to hopefully nothing. They'll pay for themselves. We got these bulbs here um, all throughout the whole building for $3 a piece. From it's a huge rebate, and re we replaced all six bulbs out in the fire bay. Giant big bulbs for sixty dollars for the total. That's amazing. And we've also um, done the sand salt shed. They had the same same type of lights. They were just energy burners. So we're hoping to save some money. Excellent. Really great job. Can that be done with the street lights? <laughs> I've asked Zumara. They're they're selling. 
energy. Oh. So amazingly, you weren't really <laughs> supportive of that. <laughs> 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 right. Okay, so uh, there we go. So, okay, Suzette. We'll go back to three, tax abatement. Oh, we have two tax abatement papers. Uh, back in the late 1970s, apparently one large property was divided into a small house and a large lot. And when it was recorded in 79, they had the wrong book and page. Um, it's come to our attention that the liens that are on that property are, could be fought in court, court if it is proposed on, which I don't see it being that. But we have to abate those taxes and then turn around to a supplemental. So keep it legal. Oh, okay. So one's abatement and one's a sup. A no, sup they're both abatements. One for 15 and one for 16. They're both abatements. And yes. when are we doing the supplemental? Next week. Oh, okay. So we need a motion to sign the two uh, tax abatement uh, forms for, let's see, account number 1355 and 1355. Is it two years? Oh, yes. it's two tax years. Yes. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Just make sure we get that supplemental. Yes, we'll be waiting for this. <laughs> This was a billing error. There's a seasonal. All right. I uh, need a motion to accept the uh, for 3864 for a billing error. Accept motion. Second. Second. All in favor? We need a witness for this as well. I'm, I'm going to be the notary on it. So. I'll be the witness. And we'll Thank, be you. Thank, Thank you. So we have two proclaimed deeds that are part of the tax sale, and we need them signed. And I need a motion to sign the. Let's see. Do we have the property? I think lot one is for lot twenty-five A eight, and the other is for lot twenty-five A seven. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to sign the quick claim deeds? A motion to sign quick claim deeds number 08 and 07. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Does that finish all of those? I, mean, I believe so. Mm -hmm. We are clear until April. <laughs> <laughs> all Other business. Um, do you want to do the boiler next? Yes. This is a big one. We have Bobby here. I'm going to defer to him. Yes, we had uh, boilers uh, <laughs> not working. It's being patched up as we speak every couple of days by the trunk so that it doesn't shoot flames out the back. Bobby? Uh, I think the only thing I don't get to be This. Um, they come in a little bit higher than what was anticipated, but the money was, we started a reserve account for the boiler. I'm guessing six, seven years ago. So at that time, we dumped 10,000 into it, I and mean, that's what it was going to be to replace it. Uh, we're up to not quite, but almost double that amount. So we do the boiler, the circulators. Uh, and that doesn't include bringing the room up to code because it has to be fireproof. Mm -hmm. like, um, our biggest concern right now is with the boiler because the boiler and the pellet system up there runs in conjunction. So without the boiler, we got the pellet boiler up there is really no good. Okay. Uh, it's really an emergency situation because uh, we've been, it goes for a while and that will blow a hole up through the back of the city. Right. So, you know, and having people staying here in the town office and everything else, I mean, we just got to figure out where to come up with that extra money out of something. Yeah, so we got three estimates, which we're going to work very hard on. 
and uh, with three different companies, Eastern Plumbing, Fosters, and Dead River. And Eastern Plumbing was 18.7, Fosters was 16.308, and Dead River was 13.990. I have to interrupt just a moment. There is another piece that is needed, which is when the boiler room yeah. will have to be brought up to code, um, being that it will be made airtight. So mm -hmm. a wall, a, 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 some sort of vent has to be Air installed. Eastern's quote has that included. Dead River and RH Fosters does not reflect that. They are going to be getting those numbers to me tomorrow, hopefully. But okay, so you can't. We can't make a decision. We just, we, you can we, give us the if we can get an amount. I mean, the highest the other one's going to go is that, and then serve the best interest of the town is exactly what you're going to get. We need to get this going. Right. We know exactly what it's going to take to get the situation. And you're not doing the up to code, you're doing the vent, but you're not doing the ceiling and all that right now. Yeah. We need no. to get the okay, so out of here. You need a motion to accept, well, what is it going to be? Well, gonna we know it's going to be, be at worst, a 16.3. It could be less if there's a bid, uh, so the motion would be 18.7. 18.7 is going to be worse. And up to. But I'm, I'm not going to make the motion to accept the highest bid. When you already have one for thirteen nine, no, plus that, a no, no, the the, the vent's not going to be four thousand dollars. It could be. Good. It has to be more. So I'm saying the motion should be. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Yeah. The motion should be right to right. accept the lowest bid of the three once the other two have come in. Okay. Yes, I like that. That's good. May you make the motion. Mm -hmm. Besides, I can just take a place. That was we're gonna we're gonna make it that way. The motion, yeah. okay, but you put it in the motion. So I'll make a motion. Make a motion that we accept the lowest bid, pursuant upon the other two bids Adding numbers, the vent have included cost. the vent cost. to you know equal the same bid process <laughs> along. In the make a motion to accept lowest bid once final numbers come in. Correct. And they're all from, they're all bidding on the same thing, right. same right. amount of work. Right. Get the lowest right. bid. Yeah, I'll second that. All in favor? Okay. You want to say the next one? Yeah. And note that we're all using the same oil. Okay. Uh, we got a large packet from Dana Bradley on the school, uh, feasibility of the school. And since we had a lot of things going on in the town, I haven't gotten through this yet. So I'd like to table it till next time. That's fair. We have a motion to table the school. Uh, I'm surprised that Dana sent that to you because I sit on that committee and we have to pack it. But we haven't met with him since before Christmas. So I, I don't understand why he did not get everybody's permission or agreement to what's in that packet. Well, I have, Excellent. I have so the packet on my desk, so I think I make a motion that we don't open yeah. our packets until the committee meets. Like the committee, the committee has agreed oh, upon what's in the packet. Let me put this right back in here. There you go. I'll read it. Put it right back. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Barbara. I have Somewhere not opened mine, right so I will keep it sealed. It until the committee agrees to present it to us. Okay. Second. All in favor. Okay. Last but not least, and there's one other thing besides this. All right, I went to a committee meeting on Saturday with a few politicians and oh, the sheriff and the DA and other people, and Bucket Davis from East Machias was there um, talking about the immediacy of LD 1629 being hear heard in Augusta tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And the um, in a, in a summary, I will read what uh, I would like as, as a select board to let Suzette testify with, so I'll uh, uh, self-explanatory if I read it. I, I am here today to testify on behalf of the Board of Selectmen in the town of Lubeck, of course, with your approval. For clarification purposes and in summary, I understand, this is from Suzette speaking, I understand that if this bill is enacted, all residents 65 years or older must be notified by the municipality after filing the tax lien mortgage at least 90 days before the right of redemption expires. It used to be 45 days. A. Assist the owner with a tax abatement and if found eligible, the municipality must discharge the lien. B. If not found eligible, the municipality must offer a reasonable payment schedule. If payment is delinquent more than 18 months after tax commitment and remains delinquent more than 30 days, a notice is sent the full amount owed. If after 15 days payment is not received, the right of redemption expires. Now that's just 
a summary of what goes, comes now that is more interesting after C. If it is suspected that the owner has physical or mental conditions that, in, that interfere with their ability to have business dealings, quote, with the municipality, the, de the Department of Health and Human Services must be notified. So here is the part in the bill that I think is the most detrimental to the taxpayer of Lubeck. Foreclosure and sale. After the foreclosure process is complete and the right of the redemption has expired, any sale of property by the municipality must proceed as follows. If the owner is 65 years of age or older and is living in the property and the property is the owner's sole residence, the municipality may not have any action to sell the property to a third party, may not take any action to sell the property to a third party until the value of the municipal lien for non-payment of taxes established by this chapter exceeds 50% of the municipal assessed value of the property. For example, all figures being approximate, in the town of Lubeck, the average assessed value of a home is $70,000. The average mill rate, and we underestimated everything, the average mill rate is $23, and the average property taxes are $1,600. In conclusion, the tax lien would have to reach $35,000 approximately 22 years to proceed with the foreclosure proceedings. Approximately 30% of Lubeck residents, according to the 2010 census, fall into the 65 or older, older category. This is an unrealistic burden to place in the remaining taxpayers of the town. Therefore, we are requesting that Section 4, Paragraph A, be stricken from the bill. That's Agreed. just the part about waiting 20 years to foreclose on a property. This is, what do you think? The rest of it is doable. It's restricted, and you have to give a lot of help. You have to advise them to have a reverse mortgage and all various other things. And if you're welcome to look it up, LD 1629, only three pages, but it's you know it's in legalese. Mm -hmm. So if they're 65. Pardon me. If they're 65, and we have to wait 22 years. They're 87. So we're either gonna they're gonna. Well, it depends on your genealogy. You might last that long. <laughs> 1629, did you say? LD 1629. It's, it's being, being heard, heard tomorrow, tomorrow at 1 o'clock. It's being voted on tomorrow, so if I understand it's being voted, it's being heard tomorrow. That That's a public once hearing. A, once a main resident becomes 65, they don't have to pay taxes anymore? That's, That's pretty much it. That's how I take it. I'm not paying taxes. Anyway, um, this is actually, it's a public hearing where you're there, wait, wait, hearing, wait. Tes there are hearing testimonies. I'm going to be 57 so. in April. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. okay, so what do you think? I'm thinking I say vote for it. <laughs> I voted then. You don't agree. <clears throat> you, don't want, you don't want to testify against it. You think it's fine. No, I don't think it's fine. So this is saying we don't want that particular clause in it, the one about the 50%. Right. And it goes further. And part of, the, part of the other part of this says that no longer can the town, for, when they foreclose, it doesn't go to tax um, tax acquired property. We don't get to sell it now. Debbie, it must go to a realtor. And <laughs> and it doesn't go, of course, till 50% of the, to me it looks like they're trying to have the town act as a reverse mortgage yeah. bank. They're, you, they want you to just sit on the house for 50% of the of the lien. Okay, I don't know who was first. What, how about Mary and then? So basically, if we were, if this goes into effect, the town of Lubeck or any town, for that matter, is going to become a realtor. Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, we have to no. give it to the real. We're not allowed. Right, but I mean, oh, the town we're, can't sell them anymore. No. no, and the proceeds go back to the owner. <laughs> what? So basically, potentially, is that be the town of Lubeck can lose well, thirty-five percent of its tax That rent. is in. Right? We have. Yes. We we are already carrying a good year's budget in back taxes. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, the we would be. Years, we thought we would pick enough. our battles, and that was the worst clause. The other ones are doable, but you know, even if you well, first of all, for helping as much it, as you it can. won't matter about. Um, it's just another supplement. Anyway. This was the yeah, best yeah, I could yeah. do in 48 hours notice, this, this testimony. Jim uh, yeah. had his hand up for what you Sorry, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, just to kind of go at it at 30,000 feet. What it does is it puts the town's interest uh, in 
the whole process of, of, of levying and collecting taxes when it comes to people who are in arrears, it puts the town in a position of being the tax consultant, yep. the real estate consultant, and the mortgage. The 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 um, uh, not not the arbitrary and, 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 and in a totally non-adversarial role, but in a supportive role uh, on the other side of the table in terms of, 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 of collecting taxes. Financial yeah. advisor. You know, and, and a financial advisor. And and uh, if it passes, I, I mean, I'm over 65. I don't ever plan on paying property taxes. <laughs> 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 just, That's right. Debbie. The other thing is, is I believe when 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 a bill is passed, well, this there's got to be funding for that bill, and I would, if they passed it as presented, there better be funding to train the tax collector on how to advise the citizen. Oh, you have to get a mediator, third-party mediator. But even the mediator doesn't know anything about reverse mortgages or m the common person that doesn't deal in real estate doesn't know anything about mortgages. Right. So it's, 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 it's kind of far-fetched. But yes. tomorrow is just, just it's kind of like hearing. a public hearing, but you have to go, um, you have to stand in front of the... Um, the panel, and you have to bring 20 copies, and Suzette's going to go tomorrow, provided you guys want her to read this. Do you like what it says? Because I don't have a whole lot of time to change it. And you can quote me, Suzette. So do, can I have a motion to send Suzette down there and at least argue that the one about the 50% of the 22 years of the <laughs> At least that part, get rid of that. Yeah, I mean, just a three year slide. Is second. All favor. That's going to be 22 years. Okay, well, let's, we're going to sign this. Can't right. make this stuff up. Hey, next year I won't have to pay. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, what am I thinking? That's good. Yeah, the other amendment is if, if, if you're 72 and it passes, you get prorated back seven years. <laughs> you get the end of the check. Carol, if that's passed, if that should go to the next step, I think the entire state of Maine needs to look at who's in Augusta. For the simple reason that we have the highest retirement age in the country, it lives in the state of Maine. That's why you keep reading. So if they turn around and enact that, okay. how are they going to get taxes out of people who are going to lose more than half? I think that, um, you know, Will was there at the meeting and he said, you know, thousands of bills. Go, this is what happens in the scallop fishery, this is what happens in the urchin, and they just get slide. That's how, when, when you find out about it, I'm like, okay, That's you can't it. read every bill. That's how the short bird issue came oh, up a number of years ago. So, no, what's that? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Who is promoting this bill? Would it say on the bill itself? No, it does sure. not. It doesn't say who's promoting the bill. It's, uh, it sounds right because it says to protect the elderly from tax. It's the governor's bill. bill. The governor. no, was, there was an article in the paper. How old is last he? Year, last year. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to like testimony? Would you like to testimony? You want a simplified version of the bill? He's going to lose his governor's salary soon. He's like, I Where's Suzette? Here's the signed one if you want to make 20 copies. Thank you for going because tomorrow there's a safe harbor meeting. I'd go with her. But she's willing to go because she's the treasurer, and that well, really affects her. She may end up having a lot, of, a lot more hands. That's right, or less. <laughs> uh, on a lighter note, the truck has arrived, and we're hoping to use it soon. Well, not really. We don't want to use it at all. We want to try it out anyway. Right. Why don't you try it out? There's a little turnaround <laughs> off of uh, down by the treatment center. Down by one? Yeah, you can try it there. Do a couple spins next time it snows. Do some donuts. Public yeah. comment. We're not going to go into executive session. We are um, we are actually going to just uh, go into a, just to make we're, we're going to discuss the deed to give back to the historical society the long-awaited. 
property back to them, which they well deserve. And there's just a few little tweaks that we need to work on on the deed. Before we do that, you asked for a public comment. And at the previous meeting, I had asked the select board to um, please review the May 17th meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, May 4th uh, mm -hmm. meeting. And if you would just indulge me, I'm sure I most of you, it. I'm sure most of you have. Uh, but just so I didn't miss any points, I wrote something out. At the, at the May 17, 2017 meeting, the select board discussed a letter from the town harbor master that was dated May 4th, 2017, addressed to Lubeck Landmarks. This letter was a formal notice to the town from the town of Lubeck directing the abatement of dangerous structure burning to burning shed and stating abatement needed to be accomplished by July the 31st, 2017. That is all in that video. Mm -hmm. You have watched it. You can't hear me, Tony? I'm yeah, sorry. I apologize. I wish I have a big mouth. He tells me it's quiet. Uh, also, at the May 17th meeting, Rachel Rubio, president of Lubeck Landmark, stated that the abatement would begin on or about August 1st, 2017, by Croc Marina and Jordan's. In responding to the selectmen's Tony Canoni, I hope I said the name of Tony Canoni, is a, who is also a member of the Harbor Board. He requested a short letter from Landmarks be sent to the Harbor Board regarding the state start date of the abatement and course of action that will be taken. Ms. Rubior promised at that meeting on May 17th to provide the letter to the Harbor Board confirming the Beck Landmarks start date for the direction the abatement would be taken. It doesn't exist, and I could not find it. I was in that, the harbor minutes. So I'm going to have to tell you, the letter never came. Using the main freedom of uh, access to information, I dedicated an entire day to research the Harbor Board minutes, and I spoke with the code enforcement, and I thank Renee, and I want to publicly thank Jim for their time and allowing me to sit up here and answer my questions or to look through that. Um, pertaining to the correspondence on identifying dangerous buildings that are, there is no record of this letter as promised by Ms. Rubio. Lessons learned. I'm big on that. I was never a teacher. But every time I made a mistake, I hope to learn a lesson from it. Lessons learned. Moving forward and to avoid a similar situation as with Landmark's collapse of the grinding shed, I am requesting that the select board develop, enact, and have strict adherence to all due dates with regards to dangerous buildings, correspondence by all officials of the town, this systematic approach is to ensure corrective action is taken to address dangerous buildings and not have any action taken on them for many years. As I said, I can show any select board or anyone here. Some of those buildings were talked about for 11 years and nothing has been done. This process should include all documentation and strict adherence to deadlines. Notice to the owner, deadline for written response from the owner, course of action required for abatement, follow up based on deadlines given to the owner and set by the town. Copies of all correspondence, I believe, should be given to the town representatives, the code enforcer, the harbor master, the health officer, the select board members, and the town administrator. Keeping them informed of the status and to ensure nothing slips through the cracks or is put on the back burner. The desire should be to have property owners be given notification and action taken well prior to the building being dilapidated that there is a notice of a dangerous building. Furthermore, if action is taken by the town against the owner of a dangerous building per main statutes 2851, 2853, and 2856, the property owner is covered because we have to follow those statutes. The collapse of the grinding shed has given us an opportunity to look at the town and how we address these lingering issues that are facing us. I hope that you will take this opportunity to put a system in place to ensure prompt adherence to concerns and to follow up with a similar situation so that this situation will not occur again. Thank you for allowing me to thank share you, that. Thank you, Barbara, and it's a point well taken. Okay, we will leave. Okay, so we're ne you're next on the agenda. Come on up. I, I would like to go home. <laughs> Can't be excused. Uh, yes. And I, I, I make a motion that we excuse him. I, I get him. a number uh, and for a hundred thousand dollar demo. It would be uh, a mill rate increase of eighty five cents a thousand. Okay. Eighty five. A thousand. 
So we don't have a hundred thousand people paying taxes, and that would mean it would be more than a hundred thousand people to raise a hundred thousand dollar property. Would be eighty five dollars. Would be eighty five dollars. Eighty five dollars. Oh God, it's eighty five cents. I'm thinking that doesn't seem right. Oh, eighty five dollars. Eighty five dollars. Oh, 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 no. Okay, got it. Got it. Eighty five cents a thousand. So $85 cents equates to the $85 for Okay, on a $100,000 property, yeah, property assessed value, $85. Okay. Hey, Jim, you take, uh, uh, for the take a personal check right now? Yeah, yeah I mean, $100, bucks, you know, $100. Bucks. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm first in off. $100. $100, uh, <laughs> you know, the shares are an average. That's for an abatement value. That'd be for a $100,000 abatement. Damn, so. Okay, so where's this? Yeah, where is this? Okay, we are looking at... Before we finish public... Uh, $115 for $100,000 property. Uh, are you... Sufficiently you sufficiently answered with your room? You know, the uh, room downstairs? Is that still going? Okay. Remember you are talking about how it needed to be... That room needed to be upkept as well. With this wall, is that sufficient for now? Testimony. To your thank you. Anything you do is sufficient for this. Because you brought up, I know you brought up that that had to be up to snow. What we know is there. I gave you the information to, to get. All right. You got the answers that you received, and you're going to proceed. Is it the still sufficient? We talked about the that boiler. public comment. The, the room needs to be upgraded. We do yeah. know that there is a fire rated door there already, which is great. It's an hour and a half fire rate, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. The room has to be uh, another layer of insulation has to uh, sheetrock. The, the, the ceiling has to be sheetrock, and another layer on the inside and under the stairs. The wall should actually go to the ceiling. Yeah, we're doing that. I contacted all the contractors on our welcome packet today. Last message is that we're looking for estimates. Okay. One last thing I want to point out. I mentioned it, that they should make the reinstallation. See, so probably we'll hear that by lowering all the piping so the ceiling can be easily installed. That's, that's mm -hmm. included in the rest of it. So they are okay. Do that. okay. Thank you for staying. You're welcome. You're excused. Okay. okay. I'm good. I just want to make sure okay. we um, cover the constituents. So questions. let's just pull the deed right out here and see what we need to uh, fix if anything. Tweak. Or before we get the final thing, Bar, you did get the notes from Nick that that um, I did today. I, uh, I know you just got it today. So uh, what in? I'm looking at one D known to all persons by these premises. This one here. Is this the one we're all looking at? Because I need to be looking at the same one. Did you give yes. her? No, I did give Bar. You have it. I have it. As long as it says release deed on the top. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so do you want to just, uh, how do you want to do this? Do you want to proceed with, is there certain the, words? The problem area begins um, in, the, in the big paragraph where it says the rights accepted and reserved herein. Yeah. That's pretty much where the problem begins, right, Barbara? Is it active exhibit B? No, right on the release date. Right, the start right, there. right where your uh, second finger is. Right. Yep. The rights accepted and reserved herein included the right to enter from time to time within no. said public access. That's not a problem. That, that's sure. not the beginning of it. We forgot about oh, and then it, Exhibit B. It says purpose of public access and transient parking. And in the Where, where's, oh, I see. The nine foot wide portion of the public access easement is for the purpose of a public access turnout and transient parking on and over the public yeah. access okay. easement for access to the four foot wide portion. Okay, how do you, how? Okay, what, just so you understand why I'm object objecting to that is, I have a copy of the, the uh, agreement that was signed between the town and the historical society. Well, I need a copy of what you're citing. Oh, okay. I can't look at it. Um, it says, subject to public access turnout easement to include an easement to the shoreline and pedestrian access. There is nowhere on what we agreed upon to say parking for people. We gave you a... Can you read that again? It says, 
transit transfer upon completion remediation. That was the title of it. It says, upon completion of full remediation of the property, the town shall transfer the property back to the Beck Historical Society subject to public access turnout easement and to include an easement to the shoreline for pedestrian access. The easements shall provide the right of the public to drive or walk to the turnout and to walk to the shoreline. To drive or walk to the turnout. But, I'll, I'll, but I'll, here I'll, she is let saying me, Let me stop for a second. And okay. Before we look at how she said it, let's get an idea of what you think before and then we'll worry about the legal part. Okay. My feeling is in the turnout is a turnout is someone who will a turnout is uh, where a car goes and parks and looks at some little plaque for a few minutes, maybe walks down to the shore and leaves and comes in the car and leaves. You know, like a very they can short. park in that nine foot area, but they're not parking any place else. That's my concern. Uh, aren't you happy? Would you be happy though if somebody would be like if the turnout? To me, a turnout implies because all the turnouts up and down Route Nine and anywhere else in Maine, there's an area to park, but it's not for a long length of time. We have people, Carol, and and this year, this, since the project has been finished, mm -hmm. that pull into the the easement area mm -hmm. and into our parking lot and go down for hours and pick glass. Mm -hmm. They're not down there for for mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes mm -hmm. to take pictures. Mm -hmm. They're there for the duration. They go mm -hmm. up and down. And that was the agreement, mm -hmm. and that, I think, was the intention mm -hmm. of the select board for people to be mm -hmm. able to get down to the shore mm -hmm. to take pictures as well as... So it's not long-term parking? No. So that's what right. about putting a sign that says 15-minute parking? 15-minute parking. I don't want to have to be out there, or does anybody here want to be out there policing it? So my agreement, when I spoke to Renee, it says... Is public access turnout. If they want to park in the turnout, knock your socks off. Strikeout and transient parking. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. And to get rid of and transient parking. Right. Public access turnout on and over the public access easement for access to the four foot wide portion. Is that, are we good? That's we good correct. So far? That, is, that is good. Okay, so where, where do we go next? I guess you can pick up where we're no, going The right accepted, the rights accepted. Yeah, could it just be to be Rights to accept it and reserved herein to maintain it, to maintain the public easement and not all this stuff here about inspect, install, well, construct, maintain, repair, rebuild, replace, remove. The other thing, um, when, I, when Renee shared with me what Mike, come up here. You should I'm going, I'm going here. here. <laughs> what the um, DEP had said. And Renee, I don't know if I brought that. I think I brought that email. So what, what do you want to Okay, I just say. wanted to make you aware that this is, from what I understood, what Renee got back from Nick. Obviously, this is the concern. This is between the town and the historical society to resolve. But maybe I can add this bit of clarification. The walkway is part of the remediation as it is part of the cover, which means it was part of the whole project. General maintenance to maintain the cover system and the walkway is acceptable and would not cause either the US EPA or the main DEP yes. to have any concerns. So anything that does beyond general maintenance of the walkway, improvements, etc., probably would be accept probably would be acceptable if it is done in a way that maintains the cover. So now you have to come over to our property that we're responsible for. Uh, such proposed improvements should be submitted. You have to. You just can't go on there and say we're going to fix this. You have to submit your mm -hmm. request of what you want to do to the DEP and the EPA. Mm -hmm. Well, the other question, Carol, and I, if I could just finish. Go oh, ahead. This is what I got, and Renee is aware, but I've kept her in the loop. This is what has to be filed every year. The DEP has made a requirement, and the US EPA, that we have to take pictures of that property and hold them on file because at any time they can come and ask us, well, wh what's going on with it this year? If there's a problem, we have to let them know and we have to fix it. Mm -hmm. Who does? Who's we? Well, the part that's not the e, um, walkway is the historical society's responsibility. Okay. But when here, when this, this attorney was saying to dig up, remove fill, pavement, and I'm like, are you kidding me? You can't rebuild this. You're not an engineer. This was engineered by and agreed to by the well, DEP and the EPA. How about to maintain existing easement as as it stands? Maintain, they have the right to maintain the existing easement. 
and not have all this other okay. stuff that's a little scary. I don't have a problem with that, but I have a question for you. And are you telling me that the town is going to pay the town workers to walk down there with a wheelbarrow and start shoveling dirt on there because they can't put a vehicle on there? Well, do you want to be able to maintain it? That was my request to Renee. We would be happy. It takes you off the hook. I think it's a great idea. So you, the it's historic right. society is willing to maintain our easement, and the easement's already described right here in this little addendum. And um, we don't think anybody should be parking there one term. Oh, anyway. so it's further than that. The lawyer wanted the degrees of each section, and well, that's sort of crazy. Yeah, yeah but that was a, that's crazy. It's a little overkill, but I'm just saying this drawing, here is, this drawing here is the drawing here is sufficient. And, and again, uh, once a year, we have, we have to take those pictures. Did you have, have to kids? take the picture? It would be nice if you come up since we see you anyway. And say, <laughs> okay, we took our pictures. Everything looks okay. You know, the walkway's all right. And we just, again, because let us know once a year. If we're we there. Help it. Maybe I, we just, help I it. just want to add that just because there's an easement, we still own the property. You just have the, the public just has an easement. The town of oh, the the historical that. society. Are you on a historical society? Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't yes. know what you meant by we. Usually when I say we, it's the town. <laughs> okay, so. Right. Absolutely, of course. Right. The, we, I know that. Weren't you my mentor in the end state? I just, I just wanted to take like that. <laughs> so it only that. seems <laughs> right that we would maintain it that easement. easement. And yeah. perfect sense. So let's so get the wording now. down, Barb. Bar. So I'm sorry, Tony was saying, Mr. Kuhn let's was saying let's uh, fix that then. Then public easement, which will be maintained by the by the owner. How about we just get rid That's of all fine. that gobbledygook and will be maintained by the owner, by the, the owner, grantee, or by the grantee. Very good. Grand tour. Grand oh, tour. grand team. You know, grand that's team. right. You're giving it back to us. Well, the grand team. Yeah. Okay, so just get rid of all of this. Take out from the, the right thing. Accepted it everything down. out. You like it? Yes, I do. Okay. How's that? Um, that's good. Anything right. else? What about these little things here? That you these little marks and all these little points. Do you care about that? Um, do I personally? I'm no, but I know the lawyer requested it, and we <laughs> paid. Oh. We. So we uh, can leave that in. We compensated. Oscar Emerson to come out and do that, do that yeah. I, and we talk about overkill oh, and we paid a me. lawyer the town to, mm -hmm. to retype this okay so that's can stay mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm striking the from the rights accepted and reserved all that all that down, and you're just going to say the purpose of passing and repassing on what honor over the public asks ex easement which will be maintained by the grantee and get rid of all that other stuff doesn't make more sense. We're there to see it. You can be there if you want to make sure that we have the annual party there. I like the last party. Okay, we need to make sure we need a motion that we can change the deed. I'll make a motion to change the deed as requested. And we can have a. And as defined on As defined on the town, on this meeting today, as of. You want to look to see. No, what I'd like to do is yeah, I, I wrote my notes when Renee makes the changes before she sends it to the lawyer so we don't use up legal fee time. Yeah, we don't, I, I agree don't with her and you be, guys see yeah, it. I don't see why we're going. Yes, yeah, exactly. she's all in favor. Dan made the motion. I made the motion. And Tony seconded. And okay. is that all right with you that I go and yeah. review it with her so that it doesn't we don't yes. play this volleyball yes. game back and forth? And then we can and it's get, costing you guys can get, get the special town meeting, a uh, special uh, select board meeting if sooner if you need that. Or no. You're okay for the next one? February 7th. That's okay. fine. I thank you for your all time. Alrighty. Thank, you. thank you. I'll be up to see you again. Okay. Public comment. Mike. I request uh, as a result of the conclusion of the dangerous buildings meeting that you uh, schedule a continuation of a public hearing to determine if the public will accept figures presented at that meeting for the cost of this cleanup. I think then we need to make a motion to allow uh, Jim or the, uh, Jim to proceed to, to get formal bids for mm -hmm. figures first. Current. Because what are you going to talk to the public about? Keep it moving. Current. Yes. Current. 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 What cleanup? 
What we really field. talked about tonight. Really, we really I'm talked sorry. about peacock. Though. Peacock. Right. The buildings were mentioned. Yeah. But, but all the focus was on yeah. that. But right. this, okay. then into what Barbara said, will start an outline of yeah, how we will, will, so of how we will go forward it. with the next one. In the past, and I was on the comprehensive zoning plan, we got really good at, at starting into the things. It's to follow through. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a follow through, and then you need the town legislative body behind you. Uh oh, uh -oh. Yes, one more quick question. Yes, That's yes, not good. One more quick question. Are we not opening up, we being the town, are we not opening ourselves up to a potential lawsuit with Mr. Peacock? Because we're singling out his building when he knows there's other buildings. But we saw that in him last year. He's got the history. I think the Peacock building is the most prevalent. I mean, it's the most obvious. In 2011. But right now, I say that his peak time is one of the See, so. Okay. See, so. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I have yeah. no. one quick question. As a board, you decided, and I really would like you to sit there and look at my face and tell me that you believe Peacock's is the most dangerous or the most imminently dangerous building, not only on Water Street, but in the back. I think that what part, I mean, how, we're looking at Water Street because the most, thousands of, of tourists come and it's the accessible to most people. So it's the most um, the probability of more people can be hurt when it's visible and it's the town proper. But what you so would have to say, what are you talking about? Any other property on Water Street? The Harbor Master said that the um, cat food garage was at eminent. It's about ready to fall down. But that's somebody. not that's not threatening a public way. That's well, that's not what I agree. Like okay. We're talking about threatening yes. a public way. Does does and again, I'm sorry. So you believe it up. that's the most dangerous? No, I think the Dodge Building facade is the most dangerous. My personal opinion. Yes, that's my personal opinion. Because if you walk by it, I think it will just collapse right on your head. I, that is very wor very worrisome. I don't mean my. I, I just, I don't the know. Continuation what of my comment is again referring to the comprehensive plan. We do an inventory because, as Jim alluded to us at that meeting, there's different situations with each of these buildings, and it's not a, a one one situation fits all. So, uh, but, but the town needs to direct their people to do an inventory on these dangerous buildings with a uh, prioritizing of is it a danger to a public way or not. A building in the middle of a pri private property that's fallen down. Yeah, like somebody brought up the, the bird the bird barn on 189, but that, you know, I just don't see that as being as, as important as somebody walking by going to the post office and a build, you know, window pane falls on their head. I would say it is, it is not imminently potentially the most dangerous, but at this point, I think, in the short time I'm here, at least from the years I've heard, is I think at least today we've established we're going to stop kicking the can down the road and leaving it for some miracle to happen. So I think by, by starting with this building and starting a structure as to how we'll approach buildings in the future um, is, is where we've got to start. Well, um, Dan, I, I'm now that I'm thinking, rethinking what Cecil said. Uh, I would like to make a motion that if something isn't constructively done with the Dodge building by the end of February, that we need to go to another step. I, th I think I'm concerned about that facade. Yeah, because I think December. you've gotten the same thing I've gotten is over the past year Just since it was established. Every time you ask, it's always it's next month or it's three weeks from now. I think yes, in this case, according to Jim, from what he said, was trying to find somebody that can safely take that will safely take it down. But it's well, now done. they found You're something. Not. He gave a date of February, right. and we need to have, as Barbara suggested, a due date do to get it done, or we go to superior court. We go to the eminent danger yeah, because right. the summer is coming. Mm -hmm. A lot of marathoners are coming, and I don't want them running. So you want to drop the motion to February seventh, our next meeting, or give it? No, I think we do it right now. Because it, it's just a motion, and okay. and the motion is that something needs to start on that building by the end of by February 28th. Is there 28th or 29th? 28th. 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 And, and a second. All in favor? 
May I address that? Thank you for that. May I have two more sentences? You? you talked about dangerous buildings to the public within the public area. When Landmark's writing shed floated out, yeah. it caused an embarrassment to the community. It caused problems with our neighbors across the bay. And we're lucky no fishermen got to. hurt. I mean, all of you up there, you sit on the harbor board, you're a fisherman, your husband is the harbor master, and you have a business. Can you imagine if your boat gets tugged on something there? We have another concern there. We have a, the biggest business in town, really, are our fishermen. We lost a boat down on Hadley Lake. Do we want to find out that we have a boat that goes down here when the next building goes down? And according to the Harbor Board minute, minutes, there are five buildings down there. They're all in trouble. Now, I'm glad we shared that information with Tony so he doesn't have to search through them. But I think we need to They're going to be inspected. I attended the last Harbor Board meeting, and Tony, they, they yeah. requested that it be looked at by both the code enforcement officer and the harbor master. Yeah. That then the, the remaining buildings be looked at. So. And in part, Barbara, that's why Peacock's important too. Because last year during the storm, there was board and some other debris came off the building mm -hmm. into the water right. during high tide. I read that. I turned out. And, yeah, and that, that was reported to the Coast Guard. That the Coast Guard up by local people here mm -hmm. to prevent a navigational yeah. hazard. Right. But if another building goes down, oh, yeah. the state of Maine and the country will be looking at us. What's the matter with you people? You lost one building sailing down the bay. Can you do anything to stop any of the other? Thank you for allowing me to share. Okay. So, and, when, and actually, the motion is for um, Jim to send the letter. We have to have the code, or we can send it as the board of selectmen, I guess. We, I don't know who would send that. Well, can we confer with Jim to see who needs to send the, the deadline to have something start? I think Jim should do it. So this yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we can sign it as well. Okay, I'm just saying he's, a, Jimmy, he's, a, yeah. he's the point man there. Carol, yeah. he sent all your other letters because I have copies that he made. Yes, I know. The only one that he didn't send you all signed was the one that went to the Dodge building. Uh, to tell them you have to do something with it. Right, but that, that, so that, that's well, that was the original one, right? That's the findings time. that was re recorded in the rec mm -hmm. record the of deeds. deeds. And, deeds. and we need to have another one, that nothing's being done, and we understand something is being done, but something has to be done, is what needs to be, that's great. Needs that's to be great. recorded, because we're Tell tired of the runaround. All right, then. Anything else? Committees? Oh, committees. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it? February. Uh, it's President's Day. I think the office is closed, but the Harbor Board is meeting again. Nineteen. Nineteen. Safe Harbor is tomorrow night, at six o'clock. Shellfish is the first going to be the six. first Monday six. in February this month at six o'clock. I don't know about the rest of the committees. And actually, when is the uh, high school? We haven't said that now. Okay. And we'll make a note we could probably discuss the funds. Okay. Oh. Carol, is the CDBG going to happen on Friday at 1 o'clock? Yes, sorry. Yes, 1 o'clock? Yes, CB, CDBG. Can you come? Yeah, I sent back to I sent okay, everybody right. yes. Yes. Renee? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry.